October 4th, 1951, a young woman by the name of Henrietta Lacks dies of cervical cancer at the young age of 31. Decades later, her cells are still at the forefront of cancer research. But these cells were taken without her permission and without the knowledge of her family members. Doctors and scientists all over the world took advantage of both her race and her gender to, pro to profit from their findings. And this erasure is present still today. Textbooks rarely mention her name, and when they do, she's incorrectly identified as Helen Lane, or simply Hila, the name by which her cells are known. <sighs> Women throughout history have played a pivotal role in shaping the scientific community, but they are overshadowed and ignored by their superiors. Many of you know Watson and Crick the two scientists credited with discovering the double helix shape of our DNA. But how many know Rosalind Franklin? Dubbed the dark lady of DNA, she was in fact the first person to correctly hypothesize the shape of our DNA. But because her male superiors didn't approve of her work, her findings found their way into the hands of Watson and Crick, who then created a 3D model and went on to become Nobel Prize winning scientists. And what's more, their faces are now plastered on every biology textbook in America. The Nobel Prize Committee in particular has a notorious reputation for skating over famous and accomplished women in science. For example, Henrietta Leavitt, who discovered the period luminosity relationship, or being able to tell a star's age from its brightness. Lise Meitner, who created the theory of nuclear fission, and Ida Nadek whose groundbreaking work with radioactive elements during World War II was all accredited to Enrico Fermi. <coughs> the scientific community often perpetuates this toxic stereotype that scientists are essentially boys with toys. And in response to this, recently a Twitter campaign was launched, launched with the hashtag girls with toys. Women in, brilliant women around the world in STEM fields showcasing their achievements and making a strong statement asking a very important question. Why should science become yet another playground dominated and defined by men? In light of this, let's take a look at a few famous and recognized women in STEM fields today. Dr. Frances Allen, the first female recipient of the Nobel Prize for Computing. Dr. Jo Dr. Jocelyn Bell Burnell, who for two years was the president of the Institute of Physics. Liu Yang, an astronaut who in, tw who in tw 2012 became the first Chinese woman in space. Maria Mirzakhani, who is an Iranian mathematician who received the Nobel Prize for Mathematics in 2014. And Dr. Fabiola Giannotti, who starting this year will take up her position as the general director for CERN. But what these women have in common is not that they were recognized for their gender, but that they were recognized for the sheer enormity of their achievements, and they were rewarded for this. This is what we as a society need to achieve, to be able to recognize achievements based on their merit, not because of the gender of the person behind them. But the thing is, you don't have to be a Nobel Prize winning scientist to gain this sort of respect. Here's the thing, I have a lot of guy friends, I hang out with a lot of boys, and I hear this phrase a lot, that I'm just one of the guys, or I'm, quote, an honorary bro. And it sounds like a throwaway phrase, but this is where it starts. And my question is, why should my choices, why should my personality have to be validated by the statement? Why should I have to justify that the fact that I hang out around boys? What this statement says to me is, yeah, she's a girl, but she acts like a guy when she's around us, so it's okay. As if her gender is something excusable, as if she couldn't possibly contribute anything if she acted like a girl. This one of the guys mentality is what we need to change. It strips away our, individual, it, our individuality, our personality, and splits us into two exceedingly simple categories, male and female and along with it, all of the implications. Suddenly, every decision we make, every career we choose, 
and every accomplishment we make is overshadowed by our gender. So, women, I say this to you. The next time you achieve something, the next time you accomplish a goal, the next time you feel successful, don't compare yourself to a man. Don't feel like you have to validate your achievements based off of stereotypes. Think of instead the likely impossible odds you have to face to get to where you are. Think of instead, despite centuries upon centuries of disadvantage, you did it. You won. You are what you have become because of what you chose to make it that way, not because or despite of your gender.